Alrighty, well, morning everybody, and it's gas time once again. And, um, and let me go ahead and start by saying, um, this is potentially going to be a very messy cast right here. Um, there is just a bunch of stuff I'm wanting to say, I'm wanting to do on here. Actually, uh, one component of OBS I tried doing, but it just wouldn't work out and I had to delete it. You'll, you'll find, you'll find out later. But anyway, um, for the music... Just cleaning up some of the windows that I don't need. Okay, but, but like I said, this could end up being a very messy cast right here. So, so don't be surprised if I start making some goofs. Um, but anyway, the music is going to be Servidae, Ethereal Woodlands. Um, this is kind of like the kind of music that I played a couple days ago. This is a cross between Dungeon Synth and Vaporwave. Two of my favorite genres. So... Beginning. Okay, so to start with, um, yeah, it was a short stream yesterday. Why? Um, well, yesterday morning, I decided to go and do a couple exercises that I haven't done in a very, very long time. Um, one where there are sumo squats. Um, just grab like a big 50 pound uh, a 50 pound dumbbell and just you know use like an open op a wide open sumo stance and you just hold it between your legs and just you know you squat up and down um it also works your inner thigh which is uh one of the muscles in my body that i hardly ever use at all so usually when i work out which is only about once per week now um i usually focus on the muscles that i hardly ever use try to bring them up to speed but uh believe it or not um my lower back is actually kind of a stabilizing force when it comes to sumo squats same with the farmers carry as well i tried doing that after not doing it in a long time um the problem i got with the farmers carry is oftentimes i don't pay attention to good form and i have this i have this habit of bouncing up and down like a little bit of spring in my step bang 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 and that actually puts a lot of pressure on my lower back um, and I actually, and I think I actually have called in from work before because of that. Just hurting my lower back like that. Um, usually that means that, uh, I, will, I have to switch to a heavier weight to kind of keep me honest, if that makes any sense at all. But, um, uh, the, kind of the problem with that is it, okay, I got to turn it down from my end. And it looks like a problem. Yeah, I'll have to, yeah, I'll have to turn it down on the YouTube as well. But but yeah, anyway, um but I've tried using heavier weight, like using my my fifty pound dumbbell and just uh hold it on one arm. Um do a uh, do a lap on my, the top floor of my apartment complex. Like you know, reach the halfway point of my route, drop, you know, and then switch hands, and then come the rest of the way back. But uh, the problem is, is uh, the the weights on the barbell are so huge, they actually collide with my leg, and they uh, lock my leg up and stuff. So, so that's one of the reasons why I went with just uh, two 25-pound dumbbells. They're smaller, and they don't get caught up in my legs as much. But... But uh, doing that, that just causes the aforementioned bouncing issue. Because uh, 225s are actually too light for me. Um, and in case one were to ask, Well, well Joe, why don't you just add some extra weight on the bars? Well, that becomes tedious. And try to hear me out on this. I know it probably sounds lazy or silly, but uh, um, I use my dumbbells for more than just farmer's carries. I mean... I also use them for, uh, I also use them for, uh, bicep curls, or hammer curls, I should say. So, and there ain't no way in hell, I, you know, my biceps can handle having, uh, 30 plus pounds on the bar. It can handle, uh, 20 to 25, and that's it. So, that, what that, what that means is I would have to 
add some weight on the bar, do my farmer's carry, you know, come on back and then take that, you know, take some of the weight off the bar to do the bicep curls. And if I wanted to do, say, say, uh, floor bench presses, uh, for the rare time I do those, then I would have to turn around and add five, ten more pounds to the bars and then do them and then for my next exercise, take them off again. But you, you kind of get the idea. It just becomes very tedious having to do it like that. So, I mean, and yeah, I also have a, I've got extra dumbbell bars laying around too, but uh, I don't really want to have a whole bunch of dumb, uh, weighted dumbbells all over the floor anyway, because then eventually it becomes a trip hazard. But anyway, um, what I'm kind of getting at with this is, uh, I ended up, um, uh, I ended up waking up twice due to my just lower back pain, just waking up, ah, oh, shit, ah, oh, you know, then I'm having to take a couple ibuprofen, then having to sit on the edge of my bed waiting, waiting for the stuff to actually kick in, and at some point you're saying, ah, eh, fuck it, laying back down, um, and then, like a couple hours later, there it is again, ah, oh, shit, you know, so, Needless to say, uh, it was a pretty short stream. Uh, played some wind jammers too, like usual. And um, like yesterday, I did pretty good. Um, I wasn't on very long. I just did a medium arcade mode, which... Uh, and alrighty, I kind of gooped that up. Alright, there we go. So anyway, um, tried doing a medium arcade mode, but didn't get very far. Surprise, surprise. Did a couple of rank, couple of ranked online matches. Um, I actually won a couple, and I actually moved up a bracket too. I went from the I don't even know what it's called, the rock bottom lead, the rock bottom tier. I uh, moved up to the bronze tier. So, so yay me! And then after that, I uh, played some more guilty. Switched on over to Guilty Gear Rev Two. And, um, which, uh, it, it went all right. Um, I did another arcade mode on Jackal. Um, and, uh, I did figure out, I, on yesterday's cast video, I figured out what, uh, what the problem was with the sound. Um, this, uh, Guilty Gear is the only game that has this issue. It's really finicky like this. Um, if the, uh, if the external speaker is on, in this case, being the, the JBL Flip 4 Stereo. Um, if it's up, uh, if the external speaker is on, and then you start the game up, then okay, the sound works just fine. But if, uh, if you turn off the external speaker while the game is still running, then the sound completely dies and you can't get it back. The only way to do that is to, uh, is to basically restart the game. So, basically, basically what you have to do is you have to, I'd have to set it to what it's set now, turn the external speaker off, that way so it's only coming in through my headphones and through the, uh, through the uh, internal computer itself, and then start the game up. And the sound works just fine, but uh, it uh, the game can't handle transitions, or specifically sound transitions. So, but yeah, like like I said, it's and um when um when looking up for when looking up uh looking it up on Google, uh from what I gleaned on there, it seems to be uh specifically an Arxis Games issue, Arxis Games the. The ones that actually made the Guilty Gear series, but it's it's just due to the way they do the sound coding and all that. It's it, it just really really wonky. So. But anyway, like I was saying, um, just played some Guilty Gear for a little while. Um, at some point after beating arcade mode on Jacko, all of a sudden. Right on time, started dozing off. So, 
yeah, this is a uh, stark contrast to yesterday where I had seven hours of great sleep. I was up and I actually streamed for about three and a half hours. I mean, I had a good time and everything. But nope, not this time. I think I streamed maybe for about an hour and a half. And then I just started nodding off. I mean, that... I hate it when this happens, but it is what it is. I mean... But like, like I said, it is... But I... I and for, the, for a while, I actually did these exercises, like, I think, like, at least once or twice a week. But it got to where it was actually hurting me at work. You know, because at work, I do a lot of heavy lifting, a lot of manual labor and stuff, so... The the farmer's carry and, all, and, the, and the squats were actually interfering with my ability to, like, push and pull stuff, especially heavy stuff. I, I just I just had to do it. Like I said, I hadn't done them for so long. I was just itching to do them again. Of course, I ended up paying the price afterwards, but I think that also comes from uh, not doing them for such a long period of time. You know, kind of kind of lost my form. Ah, uh, but otherwise, another thing that I did do last night. Um, one of my, uh, one of my favorite YouTube channels, uh, I think, he's, I think it's called The Vile Eye. He has a, he has a series called Analyzing Evil. Well, he decided to go ahead and do a tier list out of, uh, all the episodes he did, like, on how evil they are and stuff. Now, most of this went in one eye and out the other. I've, I've never seen it, I've never seen a lot of these shows that he's talking about. And the ones that he did, I only saw maybe once you know, I mean some of it and some of it what little I knew I definitely agreed with um I think you guys can see it yeah I'll have to double check yeah you can see my cursor we uh, some of it I agreed with um Emperor Palpatine no surprises there uh Ganondorf I kind of disagreed with Maybe, maybe the boss in and of himself is pure evil, but, I mean, he's part of a game franchise that, to me, is centered around little fucking kids. And, you know, oh, Legend of Zelda. In my mind, basically a kid's game. So, you know, so the whole motif, Link and Zelda and all that, you know, it's really hard for me to paint this guy as one evil dude when, you know, consider the environment he's in. Um, uh, most of these guys, uh, Freddy Krueger, didn't think about it at first, but yeah, he's S tier. Before, um, before, before he became Freddy Krueger, he was a child murderer. He killed children. So, yeah, definitely S tier. Um, the guy on No Country for Old Men, definitely S tier. The guy's a, <laughs> the guy's a fucking angel of death. Sometimes when he's in a good mood, he'll decide your fate with a coin toss, a la Two-Face. Uh, but a lot of these other guys, Scar, yeah, I could see him being S tier. He's a conniving little bastard. Um, but like, but like I said, a lot of these other guys, they're uh, they're from shows I've never seen before, or or at best, I've seen them like once. Um, A tier, yeah, I could see, I could see these two guys being evil. I would, I'd have placed this guy a little lower. It, again, I only watched Silence of the Lambs one time, but the impression I got from him, it, I want to say he's a little too silly. Then you got Hannibal, where he's like, you know, cuts off the top of the guy's skull and he's eating his brains and stuff. Mmm, they stay crispy in milk or whatever it was he said. You know, it, it just. A little too over the top. Um, Walter White, A tier, definitely. Alan Rickman, same thing. If uh, if only incompetent. Uh, Tony Montana, same thing. Uh, my all-time favorite movie, Shawshank Redemption. Yeah, definitely A tier, A tier. So yeah, for the most part, he's right on this. I've I've watched like a little tiny bit of Saw. 
but from what I saw of it, too silly. I had to place them lower. Uh, John Doe, movie seven. Never seen it. Basic premise. I guess A tier. But some of these others, most of these I've never, most of these movies I've never seen. Clockwork Orange. Um, the first half wasn't more of a more of a gangster thug than anything. Uh, B tier, yeah, kind of the same thing. Joker. But yeah, I kind of yeah, but I I pretty much agree with the rest of the stuff on the bottom. But like I said, of the of the very little I know about them. So, but uh, one thing I also uh, one thing I also did though is it it kind of inspired me to since I've been playing a lot of fighting games lately. Um, I actually started making a tier list, a fighting game tier list, but I I kind of stopped part way in. I figured this would be something I I should make a video out of. I kind of want to stream it, but as um uh, as very few people are um. Uh, or I should say, especially at the time that I start streaming, I don't get a whole lot of people on. It probably wouldn't be worth the trouble, so I'll, I'm probably going to just go ahead and make a video out of it. I don't know when. Hell, maybe after I make this cast video, but we'll see. But yeah, this... I do I do want to do a... I do want to do a fighting game tier list, though. screwing up so and then um another thing that I did is uh, I started watching season two of Tales from the Tour Bus um this time I think I hold on hold on hold on hold on hold on okay I watched I watched George Clinton like a few days ago um Funkadelic I think I did that in one of my other cast videos uh then I started watching uh the episode on Bootsy Collins. Um, he's a legendary funk bassist. But, um, but it kind of, it was kind of a little bit mind-blowing. Uh, he played, he played with James Brown, like, back in the 50s and 60s. I never knew that. I thought he just played with, uh, Funkadelic, and then he had a solo career. But, no, he, he played with James Brown as well. And, um, I really, I, I absolutely loved his uh, "What's a Telephone Bill" song. I used to have that on repeat. That and uh, I, I got, I, <laughs> I got the munchies for your love. <laughs> but uh, it, most of what he did though was really tongue in cheek. And um, and I don't, I don't think he was a pothead, but uh, I knew uh, he's really heavily into LSD. In fact, uh. In fact, the very first stop. Uh, oh, I forgot to mention, I do have this album on loop. It's only like a 15-minute album, but uh, I didn't, I didn't really want to. I, like I said, I hadn't really, I hadn't really cared to listen to anything else except this. Um, there was actually another version of this, of this album. Uh, his name is Friedhoff, but it. I wanted to say he leaned too heavily on the vaporwave rather than the dungeon synth. I think that was the first impression I got from it. So I liked it, but not enough to have on a cast video. But um, but yeah, one of the one of the first things uh, Bootsy said when uh, when Mike Judge was going to interview him for the uh, Tales of the Tour Bus thingy. He's, I think he said something like, "Man, I've been pop, man, I've been, I've been popping acid ever since the late '60s to the early seven, to the late '70s. Every day, man. You probably want to interview some other people too, because I don't hardly remember anything. <laughs> but, but yeah. So, and and they did, and they did. They brought in like they interviewed other people and stuff. But I thought that was pretty awesome of them to just." outright admit that his brain was so fried during this during the uh, during that time that you probably want to bring in some other people buddy because I know uh, in season one on at least one occasion um Mike Judge has to fact check 
um, everything that these uh, country singers were saying, or I think he has to fact check everybody that he interviews. Um, some of those country uh, country musicians, they actually got it wrong a few times. They said the wrong thing, like, yeah, this guy pulled a gun on me, but I pulled mine first, and then he would uh, he would stop the video and say, no, witness accounts say this never happened, that he pulled out a knife, not a gun. Carry on. You know, stuff like that. But, you know, it just... But, again, at least... At least Booty was the only one that I could think of that was actually up front about it. Like, hey, my mind was too fucked up on LSD, man. I'm not going to remember a whole lot. <laughs> you probably want to bring in some other people. So, but like I said, I love it. I love that honesty. Because I'm, I'm pretty sure a lot of these other people that were being interviewed, they had it... They were, like, really, um really headstrong like what I'm saying is the truth as I know it and I know everything you know that kind of stuff yeah I took lots of cocaine but it didn't affect my memory you know that kind of stuff go ahead and do this um some of you some of you that are watching my recent cast videos were pro probably weren't around when I first started making these or at, at the very least when I first started off adding images and gifs and video footage and whatnot um but this was something that I would I started around that time that I started adding images and whatnot I would also do a behind the scenes so, but let me uh, but that this that pretty much concludes my actual cast. So I do want to add one thing here. If it's even in here, I think this is it. Yeah. But, but yeah, like I said, this is gonna be a, this is gonna be behind the scenes. I talk about. I talk about the process I went through to make this particular cast video, but uh, as I got better and better and more knowledgeable about using OBS, I've been doing this less and less. But I figured, I figured it'd be kind of important to show what was going on with this. Um, but uh, you can uh, on OBS you can do slideshows, but the problem is is uh it it's very hit and miss. this real quick but I'll, I'll go ahead and show you what I tried to do but I'm working on it right now what I'm doing is uh I'm going on my I'm up uh, I'm looking up a folder see this is what it, this is the slideshow that I was trying to do but the problem is is uh not all images are gonna come up, and uh, there's like a there's like a big time blank spot. I mean, there's yeah, there's a big time blank spot that I couldn't fill up. It just, in order for me to really fix this issue, I would have to delete this entire folder and restart it up again. Well, it works now, but like I said, this it didn't work before. What you see here, what you saw there at that moment, was that missing image. But like I said, when I tried to fix it, the blank spot was still coming up. So, but like it just as OCD as it might sound, I I couldn't I couldn't have the slideshow in there with that one missing image. But anyway, since, but you know, since this is my behind the scenes portion, I can go ahead and show it. But like I said, it's, 
the slideshow feature on OBS is very wonky. I mean, not all images will work on here. So, so when that happens, when that happens, I'll just, uh, the image on the right, look, I was gonna have a slideshow on there, but it was fucking up on me, so I couldn't do it. You know, just to at least let you know. It's coming around again. And uh, you can set it to play these uh, play these slides in order, or you can do it randomly. Yeah, see? That was a blank spot. It, OBS didn't recognize that particular image. So. But, alrighty, oh, well, that's it. Um, no, that's all I got, and hope it, hope it wasn't too terrible, <laughs> despite my mistakes. I think, um, another behind-the-scenes aspect before I forget again. Um, you could also keybind all of the, uh, all the images and whatnot that you're seeing. You can keybind them, but, uh, as I have a bad memory, I just keybound everything to to alt alt and tilde the key in the upper left part of the keyboard uh the one that's above tab but uh the problem was is uh and you could set it up in such a way you could uh you can keybind multiple images to one keybind like I what I did here I have two different images keybound to one thing but the problem is is uh I I could have, it probably would have been best to keep buying these to Alt 1, Alt plus 1. But again, I've got a bad memory. I would have been scrambling around the uh, the whole time like, oh God, what, what did I keep on it to? <laughs> you know, again, I I got a bad memory and I have major CRS issues. So I had to keep buying everything to Alt, to Alt tilt. Like, uh, so, which will just shut off everything. That was the other um that was the other behind the scenes things that I was wanting to bring up. But anyway, but otherwise, once again, um that's it for the cast. So but thanks for tuning in and listening to me, everybody, though. I appreciate that. And um I should be able to do another one of these tomorrow morning. So but until then, thanks again for coming by and see you all next time. Bye now.